Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nethling, coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. The podcast goal is to share topics and guests that will help you to grow as a confident leader and to take your business and your life to the next level. I'm so pleased to have Alan Carroll as my guest today. Let me tell you a little bit about Alan. He is an educational psychologist specializing in transpersonal psychology and founder of Alan Carroll and Associates. It is a successful public speaking trainer, training coach and corporate consulting firm. He and his team have delivered the mindfulness in action workshops in over 50 countries since 1983. He has been featured on ABC TV and appeared on several radio shows and podcasts. He is passionate about giving people the experience of mindfulness and presence through public speaking. Alan Carroll and Associates had transformed over 8,000 speakers. Alan's daily yoga and meditation practices, which he learned at Isha, you're going to correct me on that, I'm sure, Foundation with Sadhguru. Sadhguru, that's right. Sadhguru are another layer in the foundation that he has created to be grounded and non-judgmental in the present moment. He dedicated his life to the search of tools that can be used by everyone to escape psychological suffering caused by our ego and reconnect to the vast transcendental spiritual dimension. I knew I was gonna screw up on that. (laughs) consciousness that lies just in the center uh, and outside of the thoughts we think. Today, I chose our theme to be, do you react to your life situations or do you respond to them? Please join me in welcoming Alan Carroll. Alan. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you very much for the invitation. What an impressive background you have there. And it's, I, I imagine that your journey to get from 1983 to today has been very interesting. I have been, uh, at an early age, I was reading those yoga books. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, Ram Das, I think, wrote Be Here Now. Mm. And I remember reading Be Here Now, and I remember reading Paramahansa Yogananda, uh, and his bi- biography uh, about life in India. And I would look at my life in Ridgewood, New Jersey, and <laughs> I would say, you know, it's not like those books, <laughs> but yet something inside of me said it points in a direction of, mm-hmm. of yeah. one's growth and development, mm-hmm. which, which led me down, I would say, the psychological pathway mm-hmm. to, discover, to discover yourself and what's going on underneath the surface. And mm-hmm. I've been very fortunate to uh, have coaches uh, like Werner Erhardt, for example, mm. uh, Sadhguru, for example, Eckhart Tolle, for example, who are spiritual leaders who mm-hmm. inspire you with their information that comes from a deeper ground of being, not from an ego, but from a deeper ground of being, mm-hmm. and which has just been nurturing for me and being able to, you know, be calm, get my thoughts under control, get my emotions under control, meditate, yoga. And I've been doing that for a long, long time. And one of the things that I discovered, Vicki, is that you can give people 
an experience of the transcendent dimension of consciousness. Mm -hmm. If uh, it, you can, you can give them that experience uh, by having them uh, focus on public speaking. And I didn't know that in the beginning, right, but over right. the last 40 years, wow, look at that. If they do this, then they get to be free yeah. from the ego. And, and that's pretty exciting. Yeah. I think that whenever you were talking, it just, the question that came up to my mind that, that might have been something that you went through is the what if, you know, it's, it's not a, it's, it's really just thinking about the possibilities and the what ifs, you know, what, what if I did do this? What if I listened to it? What is a mindful, spacious speaker? And what are some benefits of practicing mindful, spacious speaking? When you spend 40 years watching people speak <laughs> all, all over the world uh, for, for major corporations, mm -hmm. uh, engineers, salespeople, managers, and you watch how they speak, you realize after a while there is something missing. Yeah. And something totally ignored. Uh, and what I've done is I said, wait a minute, what what's that what's that between <laughs> this sound that you're speaking and this sound that you're speaking? Yeah. There, there's a empty space of silence there. And when you look at an amateur speaker, there's a total absence of silence or space or pausing. It's yeah. talk, 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 talk. It's not talk and then talk. It's mm -hmm. talk, talk, talk. Yeah. So if you begin to consciously tell yourself, I'm going to pause, mm. puts a space between the sounds that you speak, then you can take your... You can take your magnifying glass <laughs> and you can shine, you can, you can look at the space in between those sounds and you discover that there is a, I, I call it a, a command override switch. There's oh. a timing switch. There's a transformative switch in which you then can tell your body, which is the instrument that does the speaking, what to do. For example... Uh, you can tell your body when you pause, it's time to take a deep breath. Yeah. If you don't tell your body to take a deep breath when you're speaking, your body's not going to take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. And so why do you want to take a deep breath? Well, it turns out that you exchange about a half a liter of breathing in, breathing out, it's about a half a liter. But if you consciously take a breath, um. You can increase your oxygen or the prana power by by at least two hundred and fifty percent more, uh, and, and and that gives you more power mm -hmm. uh, in energy. It's like fuel for the body. But if you don't pause, if you don't practice mindful, <sighs> spacious speaking, mm -hmm. you don't have you don't have control of this of this switch, um, and and that will transform your your life is whether you're a leader or whether you're a mom or a dad or a child when you can begin to create spaces consciously between the sounds that you speak uh, you then can tell your body to become grounded you can tell your body to breathe you can tell your body to relax you can organize your thoughts a little bit because you're no longer reacting immediately to what's mm -hmm. going on you're saying wait a minute taking that breath, relaxing your body, and you step back from the event that's happening in front of you, and then you can begin to choose what avenue that you want to take. Mm. But most people, when the event happens and the reaction to the event occurs at the same time, and so there's no space for analysis. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, boom, you know, it's like right. you immediately react with a, with a, uh, a rendition or a narrative that you then paint about what you what you think is going on in this moment of now. So good. I love the pause. That's something that all, all these twenty some years I've been doing this. That's the thing, the thing that I work to perfect because it's so important. And it's whenever I speak, I often get told about it because. I do. I wait for the reaction of what I'm saying 
so that I know how I could next lead on to what I'm going to say. Exactly. And that gives you a chance to, uh, it, it, it not only gives you a chance to think about how you want to formulate your next thought using your, your data, your voice, your gestures, mm -hmm. or, or physical objects, it also allows the audience to digest yes. what you just gave them. Yes. Uh, and if you don't pause, it causes indigestion for the audience <laughs> rather than digestion. And you see most speakers are making the audience sick because they're throwing too much food at them, not enough empty spaces at them in order to balance out that the, it's just there's too much data. You need to balance it out with more space, more, more emptiness. And I think that in my experiences, people, the speakers tend to fear that silence that pause that space because they think that the audience might think they don't know what they're going to say next or they forgot something or it's awkward for them as opposed to looking at it as the power that's right that, that speech that speaker has yeah we call it the power of the pause yes yes and, and, and when you when you stand in front of the audience there's a, there's a mental attitude that, that you either own the room mm -hmm. or the room owns you. Yeah. Either you are there with a purpose that you have service and a contribution to make to the audience, that you have information that will help them accelerate themselves towards a mindful state of consciousness mm -hmm. or heal the emotional upsets that are caused by thoughts that are out of control. Mm -hmm. And so you're not concerned about looking good or uh, does it make, uh, it, you're not concerned about looking good. You're concerned about making your contribution. Yeah. And so you bypass that thought inside your head. How am I doing? Do I look okay? <laughs> I, make a mistake. I don't want to look like a fool. Oh my goodness <laughs> gracious. I look like a fool. <laughs> and, and so you, and most people, number one fear, as you know, uh, if you Google it, is, is, uh, is fear of public speaking yeah. because you are exposing yourself to annihilation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the audience can go like that and the ego, the ego's mm -hmm. not interested in being annihilated. The ego wants to look professional mm -hmm. and, and putting yourself in front of an audience puts you in a situation where you may make a mistake and not look professional. Therefore, most people don't even go in front of the audience. They yeah. let someone else go in front of the audience. I'll, I'll watch the show. I'm not going to be the show. I'll watch the show. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. And, and really what they're saying is, I'm just going to watch life pass me by because I'm not participating. Yeah, I, and I, I don't want to, uh, and, and that comes right out of the, the, the mind uh, wants to uh, survive. Yeah. And whatever you've identified yourself as being, you want that to survive. So, for example, most people, everyone that, you know, we all know, mm -hmm. identifies themselves as their point of view about mm -hmm. whatever that situation is. And if you say something against my point of view, it will cause a reaction, mm -hmm. a defense. Uh, in, in the Course of Miracles, they'll talk about it as a, attack thoughts. Mm -hmm. You will attack that which you perceived attacked you. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and what you have identified yourself as being, which in the psychology business, we're gonna call that the ego, mm -hmm. or, or your identity. Uh, and it's very useful to understand what is your identity uh, because your intellect, which is a very sharp tool, is designed to protect your identity. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know what you've identified yourself as being, then you don't have too much control over your reactions to mm -hmm. things. And most people uh, don't spend the time. What do you mean, my identity? What, what, like, what, what are you talking about? You know, and, <laughs> and and there's an exercise. What we do is you just take a piece of paper and one half you just write the word "I am," mm -hmm. then on the other half you write all the things from your culture to your religion to your body to mm -hmm. your to to your belief systems to your football team to your whatever it is. I am that. I am that. I am that. I am that. So you list all the direct mm -hmm. objects. And that becomes your conceptual identity. Mm -hmm. And if I say something to you that it, uh, that attacks something that you are deeply identified with, mm -hmm. God, for example, for a lot of people, religion is a deep program. Mm -hmm. 
more people that have been killed over my God is better than your God and I and, and fighting for years and years and hundreds and centuries over yeah. over over the religious identity. Mm -hmm. And so that's as an example of what of what the human mind will do uh, to to preserve and protect its identity. Mm -hmm. uh, and most people haven't spent the time to try to understand their identity and therefore unfortunately you you, you can't control the upsets if you don't mm -hmm. know right. what button has just been pressed right right so I, I think we are have already sort of touched on this but is it possible to manage our thoughts our opinions and improve our emotional intelligence and if so, how do I do that? Yes, the answer is yes. And uh, the way you, you, you manage thoughts mm -hmm. is more of a challenge because the thoughts exist in a metaphysical place. Mm -hmm. You can't see your thoughts. You can't mm -hmm. smell your thoughts. You can't taste your thoughts. You can't touch your thoughts and you can't hear your thoughts. So thoughts don't exist in the physical world. So trying to grab and manipulate and understand something that doesn't exist in the physical world is a challenge. Right. However, the good news is that you may not be able to control the thoughts that you think right away, mm -hmm. but you can control the thoughts that you speak. And when you control the thoughts that you speak, what we mean by that is you simply control the timing. I, I, I can speak when I want to speak. And I can stop when I want to stop. Okay. Amateur speakers just know how to start. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even occur to them as a possibility to stop. Why would I stop? I got something to say. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, and, but if you stop, uh, you then get in touch with that space between the sounds and mm -hmm. the space between the sounds is, is the empty space of nothingness is the, is the, is presence is mindfulness is enlightenment is Satori is, mm -hmm. uh, it is the universe. Uh, but people are so focused on the, the words, the sounds, uh, the, the, the sounds and the words are like stars in the universe and you take all the stars and all the planets and you put them together, it represents less than 1% of all the things that are out there. Yeah. When you begin to practice pausing between the sounds that you speak, you slip in to that empty space of nothingness in which you are aware that you're no longer thinking. You're just present and aware mm -hmm. and tuned into your body. And from the from the Buddhist tradition, you would say you are in a embodied state of consciousness whereas if you're thinking about the thoughts and what you want to say you're in a disembodied state of consciousness mm -hmm. and when you pause you shift your perception from paying attention to the thoughts to paying attention to your feet breathing relaxation and grounding the instrument which is speaking the thoughts and most people don't do that piece <laughs> and therefore they're not grounded and mm -hmm. they're caught by the thoughts that they're thinking rather than I have thoughts, but I'm not the thoughts that I'm thinking. I just, I'm an instrument. I'm, I'm a point of observation of the thoughts. Right. But now there's a space between the thought and my observation of the thought. And that space allows you to respond to the event rather mm -hmm. than react to the event. If you react to the event, there's no space between the event and your reaction to the event. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem there is that, is that people come from, I know what's going on right now. And you have to come from a different a different place. You have to come from I don't know. That means everything that you see, Vicky, has no meaning. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean? It has no meaning. Well, you know, <laughs> everything you see, all the pictures of your family and all the things that are so dear, your teddy bear from when you're five years old and all that meaning, it has no meaning at all. And when the objects in your reality have no meaning, everything just is. And when everything just is, you're in a mindful state of consciousness. The second one is that it has no meaning, and I paint the meaning of everything. 
that picture of my mom and dad, I paint that picture as good, bad, right, wrong. What you say to me, I paint that's good, that's bad. The color of your skin, I paint that as good or bad. The religion that you have, I paint that as good or bad. The country, your football team, I paint that. as. So I am painting my narrative of this moment of now based on the past, based mm. on what I believe and what I've experienced in my life on the planet. Um, and you get to the point where in in mindfulness, you're able to separate yourself and and you're no longer paint what's so for what is. Everything mm. just is. And that is freedom. Wow. That is freedom from psychological suffering, which is caused by reacting to something somebody is saying about my identity, which I don't like. Mm. And and your physiological your your physio your body changes. Yeah. Like anger. People anger is is like it's like acid. It's like toxic chemicals, mm -hmm. changes in your body. The mm -hmm. ego is really excited by the anger, but your body is suffering. Mm -hmm. And But most people, I don't care. I was right, and that's the way it's going to be, you know? And, and their whole body is... Mm -hmm. But I don't <laughs> care because it's more important for my ego to be right, right. for me to be healthy, yeah. for me to be balanced, to be to mm -hmm. be nurturing. Is, my ego is much... So that tells you how out of control... And the importance of being able to transcend the ego so that you're able to generate love for everyone. Yeah, and and also just to find peace in in life. I mean, if you're constantly allowing someone to paint a different story than your your true self, I don't know. Right, people are uh, if if the thoughts that you think are usually stirred up by something is not the way you want it to be in your reality mm -hmm. something you didn't get the job you didn't get the you didn't like the weather you don't like the government you don't like you know the football team lost there's something going on in your movie that that you resist that you you don't like the way it is mm -hmm. so you get stirred up so you, so your thoughts uh -huh. your all all your thoughts get get all get all stirred up but when you pause what happens is all that stirring up all of a There's sudden clarity so, yeah and, and and this is the way you want to be in the moments yeah. of now that you're in uh, and uh, so you are able to move through the space mm -hmm. but not get stirred up uh, by someone attacking your mother or your country or your body or your hair or your makeup right. or, your, or, or your teeth or whatever, whatever you you are sensitive to mm -hmm. you, you don't you don't get pulled off center you're able to stay stay balanced and 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 even keel. Mm -hmm. In the in the Buddhist tradition, they use the word uh, 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 equilibrium, mm -hmm. mental equilibrium, uh, where nothing is good, nothing is bad. And oh. I recalled Shakespeare's quote, which I love from Hamlet. Mm -hmm. It says, "Nothing is neither right nor wrong, but thinking makes it so." So in this moment of now, nothing is neither right or wrong. There's not good or bad. There's mm -hmm. nothing neither right or wrong. But my thinking now, how I paint this moment of now, yeah. what words I say are the meaning of this per per point of view, I, I do that. Uh, and that is a big uh, a revelation that mm -hmm. you, when you realize that you are the one creating your interpretation and then you attack so you're a bad person, which I, once I've created that you're a bad person, then I can justify attacking you because you're a bad person. But wow. the problem of it is I painted you being a bad person on my tabla rasa, on my blank slate up here. Yeah. I created you being a bad person, and then I justify attacking you based on my own creation. And that is, that that's what, that's, that's, I call that psychological hell. Uh, yeah. psychological suffering because that's not the way it is yeah but for most people it is well and I, when could you pond pause, I could ponder on that for a while yeah I, well i you know i've been playing this these these words mm -hmm. for 40 years and studying it and uh, meditating me meditating is is the watching of the thoughts mm -hmm. so if you want to become a mindful spacious speaker the saying is you got to go within in order to go without. Oh, you mm -hmm. want to be enlightened? Great. It's not about 
going out. It's not, it's not about putting your hands in the outer world. Mm -hmm. It's about putting your awareness in the inner world. Uh, and close your eyes, relax your body, and begin to watch the thoughts. Just watch the thoughts. And there'll mm -hmm. be thoughts. There'll be thoughts after thoughts after thoughts. Eckhart Tolle and Deepak Chopra said 65 to 80,000 thoughts a day, like a freight mm -hmm. train passes through your consciousness. Wow. And of those 65 to 80,000 thoughts a day, how many do you manage? How many are you aware of? You know, it's yeah. like, no, no. Like, yeah. I don't know what I thought about yesterday. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and, and so uh, when you begin to meditate, you begin to uh, watch the thoughts. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my practice that I do, I do about an hour a day of, I call it stillness, becoming mm -hmm. still getting your physical body still, uh, doing some yoga, doing mm -hmm. some breathing exercises, uh, eyes closed, because the eyes closed are important because if your eyes are open, it's a lot of stimulation. Yes, come As soon as you close your eyes, I don't know the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know your eyes. I, I don't know all these cues at all. Oh, that color, I don't like those people. Well, mm -hmm. I can't see what color of your skin is. I, I don't know what you're really, I don't know how you were dressed. Mm -hmm. All I know is I hear, I hear your voice. Mm -hmm. So closing your eyes immediately puts you into a more still, yeah. still state of consciousness. Quiet room would be good. No distractions. Early morning is pretty good if you mm -hmm. wanted to do, and just start with five minutes, just five minutes to close your eyes, put your feet on the floor and just take, Breathe through your nose, push mm -hmm. your belly out, belly breath, take a, take a deep breath and hold it, then release it. Just do three or four deep breaths. Uh, and just when you, when you breathe out, imagine energy and tension just flowing out of your feet into the floor. Uh, and that is a, a grounding exercise, getting your body grounded to be able to begin to get those thoughts that are all mental noise going on inside your head, begin, they begin to settle. Mm -hmm. at least you start the day with a little bit of settling starting with that and, and that's equilibrium. like going to the gym and people wow. that would be definitely a, a way that i'd recommend to begin to manage the thoughts that you think perfect so what do great leaders have in common when they do speak the when you watch people who are able to influence mm -hmm. and move the room and people come to mind, usually politicians are pretty good at it. I go back and I'm thinking of Ronald Reagan, probably mm. before your time. No uh, way. <laughs> he was, he was a You're great sweet. communicator. He was an <laughs> he actor was. He was. and he was able to really charm the audience with his mm -hmm. voice. Uh, 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 Trump, uh, Donald Trump, uh, he's able to charm the audience with his voice. Barack Obama is able to charm the audience with his voice. Bill Clinton charms the audience with their voice. A professional actor, actress charms the audience with their voice. Mm -hmm. And what, what they're able to do is they're able to control the timing mm -hmm. of, their, of their speaking. So now they can keep the instrument grounded say what I want to say, and then keep the instrument grounded, go in this direction and say what I need to say, and keep the instrument. So there's a the, the yang energy and the yin yang. The mm -hmm. yang energy is the forward thrusting of the energy, and the yin energy is the pausing, the relaxation, the letting the vulnerability and the air come mm -hmm. into your body, whereas the yang is the air goes out of my body, and the yin and so they are balanced, they are mm -hmm. anchored, they are still, would be another word to say they are still. They mm -hmm. are able to get their physical, mental, and emotional bodies in a state of stillness. And when you're in stillness, you have clarity. Yeah. And when you, can, when you can clearly see what's going on in front of you, the decisions <sighs> that you make, appropriate inappropriate you get better at making those decisions because you can see things a little clear your ego doesn't get in the way you, you, yeah. you see what is the most appropriate course of action and that boils down to you got two choices either what you say are loving thoughts or what you say are not loving thoughts mm -hmm. and so if you want love in your life you got to practice increasing loving thoughts 
and decreasing non-loving thoughts, but the ego is not interested in loving thoughts or not loving thoughts. The ego is, <sighs> hey, I'll tell you what I believe to be true, Vicky baby, and it's ban, 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 ban. So those aren't loving thoughts, but I feel good about that. But if you are awake and alert, you realize that what I give and what I get are the same thing. So why mm. would I give you attack thoughts when yeah. I could give you loving thoughts? Um, and But then I'd have to get off my grievances that I have about you and about where you came from and what you did to me 350 years ago. You know, whatever the grievances that people carry with mm -hmm. them, which, which they can't let go of because yeah. they've identified themselves as, no, I'm a victim. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a victim because of my mother or my father or or whatever. And I can't let go of that because that's my identity. And that mm -hmm. causes a lot of challenges for people. But as you begin to pause, as you begin to breathe, the, the pressure, it's like you have that... Uh, that cooking thing, a pressure uh, cooker. Pressure cooker, yeah. Pressure cooker. And my mom had one that had this little thing on top mm -hmm. and she would cook beans or something in it. And, and then you would turn it and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. psh, yeah. mm -hmm. it would release the, the pressure. Mm -hmm. Well, pauses are like that releasing of the yeah. pressure, the psychological pressure uh, that mm -hmm. you don't even know is there. Yeah. You begin to practice pausing and mm -hmm. I look at it like you are the aerator for the, so for the, the, mm -hmm. the lawn in the winter. And the aerator is in the spring. It puts holes in mm -hmm. the soil for water and fertilizer. Well, you want to put holes in the fabric of your speaking. We call mm -hmm. those pauses. And that will aerate, mm -hmm. relax, calm you down, train you not to get upset. Mm -hmm. Because there's now a buffer zone of mm -hmm. space between the event and your reaction to the event. Mm -hmm. And that just makes it's healthier. It's, it's yeah, healthier. it's healthier for your body. You can mm -hmm. breathe better. You can think better. I, I I work a lot with salespeople and corporations, and unless you pause, a lot of your thoughts are all constipated and caught up and figuring out what to do. But when you begin to pause, mm -hmm. the thoughts begin to line up and become more organized mm -hmm. in the way you deliver the thoughts to the audience. But pausing allows you to get organized. If you don't pause, then it's, you know, you rely on your PowerPoint slides or you, you don't feel grounded and you don't mm -hmm. feel comfortable and you overflow the buffers. It just is too much data. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. The, you know, the clarity piece, I, I love your example because it is so vivid, visual that you understand it, it is that way with, when you do that data dump that constant talking you don't you have that massive fogginess and people aren't getting it they can't see what you're trying to say awesome. absolutely awesome what is the practice i can use to be a better listener and this is one i i like to teach all the time too is how how can we help our audience to be a better listener Listening 1A would be to, let's see if I have something here I can show you. And if you could do this one move in the communication game, it would reduce probably 85% of all the resistance and suffering and emotions and all those things. And as, as you see, this is a mirror. Got a mirror here. Mm -hmm. And when uh, someone talks to you, uh, and this is something you want to practice, not when they're in the heat of anger, uh, but just easy conversations with, let's say you want to know what the word stillness means. And so you mm -hmm. say, gee, Alan, what does the word stillness mean? All right, so I'm going to take my mirror and I'm going to reflect back to Vicki what Vicki said to me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Vicky using first names is nice because it's more intimate than yeah. stranger stranger it's Alan and Vicky so there's already drawbridges that are going down to build mm -hmm. our relationship so it's Vicky and Alan uh, talking about the idea of reflective listening or active listening mm -hmm. or mindful spacious listening mm -hmm. where I would say so let me see if I understand Vicky and correct me if I'm wrong 
Now, if you say that those words, the way that I just said them, yeah. let me see if I understand. So right mm -hmm. away, the person knows that, oh, this person wants to understand me. Yeah. No one wants to understand me, but that <laughs> nice person wants to understand me. Hey, that's the, well, what do you want to know? Uh, well, I'd like to know about uh, what stillness means. So, oh, so you want to know about stillness and where still? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. So now they feel heard and they actually acknowledge being heard. Mm -hmm. And if you just did that, so it became a practice. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me see if I understand and correct me if I'm wrong, because the e you're allowing the, your ego to be corrected, which the ego doesn't want to be corrected, but right. you're giving them permission to tweak uh, your understanding because mm -hmm. if i don't have it exactly right i'm not going to take it personal vicky mm -hmm. you know, it's not personal just mm -hmm. let me see if i understand and correct me if i'm wrong so you want to know about the stillness and that person will say yes i want to know about the stillness so mm -hmm. then you can say whatever you want to say but that allows you to give the experience to the to the person you're talking to mm -hmm. that their song that they're singing has been heard and yes. received not agreeing the problem with that with listening is that you think if i recreate what you said it means mm. you say and that's not true at all right. we're not right. saying that at all what i'm doing is i'm allowing what you said to exist within my reality mm. i'm not resisting it even though i may not agree with your point of view I still am I'm allowing it to exist within my reality mm -hmm. without resisting it. And that takes self-esteem. It takes confidence uh, to be able to be able to to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and but that's the direction you want to go to, whereas anyone can say anything and it's not going to bother you yeah. because it all comes out of their conditioning. It's how they were raised. It's the garden in which they were raised and has absolutely nothing to do with you. you. But most people think it has everything to do with me. Oh, like, oh my God. It has everything to do with me. Uh, <laughs> so now you control me rather than I control myself. I'm, I'm now, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I didn't, I'm, I apologize. And so you become like a doormat and, and, and you, you've lost your ability to, to ground yourself. There mm -hmm. is no right, there is no wrong, but thinking makes it so. Wow. This has been enlightening. It has been wonderful speaking with you. And I knew from your bio that I would enjoy this conversation quite a lot. It's time now for rapid fire. <laughs> it is time for rapid fire. Now, some of the things we've already touched on, um, I pulled some of the rapid fire phrases from your, uh, your bio, but would you just go into a little more detail just a little bit more about ego, uh, the difference between a ego and a being. Sure. The ego uh, is the, all the things you've identified yourself as being is your conceptual ego, are the mm -hmm. thoughts that you think would be your ego. And, and the being, is is on the other side of the thoughts that you think and most people never experience uh, disconnecting from the thoughts that they think mm -hmm. i am the thoughts that i think i my mm -hmm. thinking is who i am mm -hmm. well that's not who you are you have mm -hmm. this tool inside of you it's mm -hmm. it would be like i have a flute and I'm going to play music. I'm not the music. I'm I'm the flute playing the music. Mm -hmm. I'm the instrument thinking yeah. the thoughts. Uh, but I'm the instrument that 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 plays the thoughts. But I'm mm -hmm. not the thoughts. But mm -hmm. the problem of it is the ego has identified itself as the direct objects that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. Whereas the being is that you identify yourself as on the other side of of your thinking but see that once again is it's is too abstract mm -hmm. so you can do it by practicing pausing mm -hmm. because that disrupts the mm -hmm. automatic flow of the ego and when you disrupt mm -hmm. the automatic flow of your speaking you then have tamed the ego's tongue 
and when you tamed the ego's tongue, then you have the power of your speaking, not for the preservation of the ego, mm -hmm. but you now have the power of your speaking for the preservation of love and, and the caring and compassionate is now under your control. And you're no longer seduced by the egoic attack thoughts. Um, and, and so, but that is not a conceptual understanding. You have to close your eyes. You have to meditate. You have to ground your body. Mm. You have to practice putting spaces, mm. pauses between the sounds that you speak. Because every time you consciously put a space or a pause, you become alert and you wake up. Wake up from what? Wake up from the dream of thought. Uh, those 80,000 thoughts a day, you don't, it's a dream. They fade away. They fade, they fade <laughs> away. Right. They fade away. They fade away. And that pausing practice, which you can do anytime, mm -hmm. and you consciously create space, you become more spacious. And the last thing I'll say about that would be you have two types of trees. You have the willow tree, which when the wind blows, it opens up. And you have the oak tree, when the wind blows, it's solid, it doesn't move. Mm. And so you want to practice being the willow tree, right? And allow it to flow through you. And then it relaxes you again, rather mm. than resist what's going mm. on. You don't want to resist the wind. Right. <laughs> you want to you want to float with the wind, you want to be mm -hmm. flexible with the wind. Transpersonal psychology. What does that mean? Transpersonal psychology is the building of a bridge between the egoic identity, which causes a psychological suffering for people, mm -hmm. and, the, and the transcendent dimension of consciousness, or the mindful state of consciousness, or the present state of consciousness, or the enlightenment mm -hmm. state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And you can build a bridge between those two. And so, mm -hmm. so transpersonal psychology is the study of well, how can you build that bridge? Right. What What can you do to help people uh, become more present and mindful in all their activities? Because if you can have mental equilibrium, uh, then you are able to deal with situations and and not cause damage to your body. Mm -hmm. With where the ego puts its foot right on your neck and doesn't care because it's a doesn't it's more important being right mm. for the ego rather than preserve my physical body you got to be kidding i'm not my body i'm my <laughs> mind and i want my mind to be right and that causes a lot of destruction so is that building project a long-term project or is it something that you you can do small projects to get that bridge built at a time and and see small incremental progress sure absolutely it, it requires a level of commitment a level of interest mm -hmm. in in pursuing that desire to reduce the suffering that you mm -hmm. have in your life uh, one of the, the one of the slides that i saw back in the 1970s was on an alchemy uh, talk done at the university of santa cruz in california mm -hmm. And they showed you a picture of a vessel, an alchemical vessel, it had water in it and a little fire underneath. They had a bird inside. And they talked about the, the transpersonal evolution of consciousness. And they showed the, the beak of the bird was, was sticking its beak into its own body and blood was, was dripping out. And the message was that the, the journey of transformation starts with a self-inflicted wound. I can't mm. tell you you need it, Vicki. You have to finally realize that, you know mm. what? The belief structures that I've been using to try to understand my life hasn't produced the level of joy and satisfaction mm. that I want. I'm now going to look at other ways mm. other than what my mom told me or the church told me or my father told me. I'm going to explore other ways. And so now you have more of an open, open mind. But that comes out of a recognition that, hey, it's, it's not working. <laughs> I, I need I need I need help. And so then you begin to go to meditation because meditation is the is the number one way to help you manage your thoughts. So what's the best place that you go to recharge? 
The best place I go to recharge, there are two places that I go to recharge. One is nature. Mm -hmm. Getting out outdoors because you, if you if you want to become still, go where stillness is. Yeah. Not Times Square in New York City. That's not where you go to become still. You go mm -hmm. there to get you know energized. Uh, you want to go places in nature with trees or you're you're you know uh, quiet, mm -hmm. uh, no noise, no distractions. Uh, and and spend as much time as you can in nature uh, because we came from mother earth and mm -hmm. that's mother earth and and so when you return to mother earth uh, you're returning to your roots where your food that you are your bag of food where did the food come from it came from mother earth yeah. the second place to go to is when you close your eyes and when you close your eyes you go into that inner universe mm -hmm. um, and the outer universe shuts down yeah. And now you're tuning into the inner universe. And so that is a place of solitude. So nature's a place of solitude and closing your eyes and mm -hmm. meditating in a quiet place is a place of solitude. So those are two places that I'd recommend is to get out, yeah. get out with nature as soon as you can. Two of my favorite places. Ah, good. Mm -hmm. Building resilience. What does that make you think of? Uh, resilience uh, is the ability to you become capsized by by some event that's happened and then you are able to become right side up again mm. um, and uh, most people don't have the ability they get capsized they may, they may stay capsized for weeks mm. uh, I, I will never forgive you for what you did a yeah. year ago kind of thing uh, what you did when I was five years old, I will never, ever forget that. So you stay capsized. Mm -hmm. And when you stay capsized, you suffer all the pain that's caused by seeing the world upside down. And as you become awake more, and pausing would be a way of becoming awake, you, you're able to come right side up quicker. Mm -hmm. So you, you still get capsized, but the speed in which you recover is faster and faster and faster and faster. Uh, and, and that comes from realizing that the thoughts that you think about the situation, which was so important, are meaningless. Yeah. Are just conditioned reactions based on the past, what your mother told you, what your father told you, has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on right now. So you rather rather than play your hand, pause, hold the cards and just look at the cards for a little bit rather than I don't need to quickly react. And, and so you're able to build up your, your ability to recover, which I would call resilience, your ability to recover from being upset. I'd love that. I, I think that's very visual and makes perfect sense. Ah, good. Thank you. So the final piece, final, All right. final rapid fire is what would your next path on your journey be? Well, I've been blessed with knowing my purpose from a very early age. I, I was able to meet a spiritual leader who was uh, tuned into another level of consciousness that I didn't even know existed. Yeah. And when he closed his eyes in this room in California, up in San Francisco, a wave of energy pushed me back into my chair and I'm 21 years old. And he said, Alan, what, you're a trainer. And what you do is you, you train people on what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's the umbrella uh, over which everything takes place. So podcasts like we're doing, uh, training like I'm doing, meditation mm -hmm. like I'm doing, being out in nature that I'm doing, uh, all these things have to do with the reducing of suffering. Uh, person, it starts out with your own personal suffering that you've experienced yourself. Um, and then how can you heal mm. other people? Uh, yeah. and, and, and what I've discovered in public speaking uh, is that you can heal people by having them control the timing, the mm. creation of spaces. They become more spacious. They become more relaxed. Mm. And they become more balanced in, their, in all their affairs, whether it's with the children, the wife, the husband, business, customers. They, they become more more balanced and so my my life is about creating a a, a, a training 
that allows people to experience this. And that's what we've been doing for 40 years is creating these, these training programs. And I continue to create the training programs. Uh, and what's nice about that is that every time you do a training, you polish it a little bit. Yeah, polish yeah, it, polish that's it, right. Polish it. Mm -hmm. So after forty years, it's it's pretty bright. Yeah, shiny. And, but hopefully, I got another forty years, Vicky. That's exactly bright. right. Excellent. Yeah. It's now time for me to warn everybody that's just listening in that I will be sharing my screen. So if you are just listening, go ahead and grab a pencil and paper so you can write down the contact information for Alan. I know you are want, going to want to connect. All right. So you can reach Alan at his website, which is A-C-A-M-I-N-D-F-U-L-Y-O-U. So A-C-A Mindful U. A-C-A Mindful U. His website is as, as his name, Alan Carroll. Um, you can go to LinkedIn at A-C-A Mindful U. Instagram is Mindful mindfulness seminar right and then he is out on youtube i think you could just probably search for uh, mindfulness seminar as well as um his name alan carroll why don't you um tell us a little bit more about your youtube channel you have a podcast what's the name of that podcast I do podcast, Vicky. I don't have a podcast. Oh, oh, you're a guest. Well, I'm, you're a heck I'm, of a guest. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing the guest circuit now. I'm going guest on podcast, um, and we've been doing we do Instagram for a few years now, mm -hmm. and we have Facebook, we have LinkedIn. Uh, these are social media, uh, you know, platforms as you know, mm -hmm. uh, which we use to disseminate information. You go to the website uh, that will list the training programs that we have. Perfect. We have corporate programs, then we have public programs. So if you're not part of a corporation, you can still do, do the trainings where we actually coach you uh, mm. on your speaking. So you get to experience mindful, spacious speaking, and we transform your ability to speak. And that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it is. That is. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. So hope you grab the screenshot. Well, it's time now for us to wrap up. I just wanna thank you so much for sharing your great tips, great insights, and giving people a lot to think about. And as always, uh, everyone should check out his website, check out his social media, ask questions, make comments, like and comment on those sure. social media pages. And as I always end, life is a journey and it's up to you to enjoy the ride. This is Vicki Nethling signing off. Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Medling, where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.